Hello, everyone, and welcome to the family press conference for the new Amazon Prime Kids show, Do, Ray, and Me. I am so thrilled to be sitting with this amazing cast and uh, the creators of the show as well. We've got Kristen Bell, Jackie Tone, and you, Luke Youngblood. So hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hi. So we have a lot of uh, family press outlets from all over the country right now listening in. They've also sent in some questions for you guys, and we're going to get to those as well. And I want to remind everybody that we are recording this. We are going to be able to share copies, so you will have some of this, uh, some of these answers. So don't feel like you need to furiously right away. And um, also want to let you guys know if you have any other questions that may pop up during our conversation, you're welcome to send those in the chat here. Uh, I'm so shall be we? Personally, get... writing down every single thing. <laughs> write it down. Today, I have pen, paper, and I am. Everyone, take notes. That's right. <laughs> Good. I love it. We love an invested uh, interviewee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So Jackie, I had read that you actually um, spent some time learning about childhood education. Um, that was something that was interesting to you when you were going to college uh, at one point in your career, one point in your life. Did that have an influence on why you decided to co-create this show? You know, it's really funny until you said that I was like, I did, but I did <laughs> before. So I've been, I've been acting since I was a kid, since I was nine. And when I went to college, I, I said, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to be normal. I'm going to go to school. And I went to college for elementary education. Always something I've been super passionate about. Always love kids, mostly music education, but I went for just overall elementary. And I didn't even tie the two together till you asked. But to answer your question, yes, it's something I've always been um, passionate about. But we'll all, this is Glenn. He's sort of ruining it, sort of making it better. We don't know. He's totally um, making it better. <laughs> great. Half head, ear, corner boy. But I, um, you know, this is something that Kristen and I have been passionate about forever, which is, you know, basically because arts, educations are the, arts, ed arts education is the first thing to go in budget cuts we're really passionate about making sure that music education gets into the heads and hearts and homes of as many kids as possible. And now the educational element of this show is something that is um, very obvious when you're watching as a, as a parent and as an adult, but I love the subtlety of it because it's, it's done through the music. And I don't think the kids will realize like, oh, I'm enjoying this. I'm singing along, but I'm also learning as well. Um, and I want to talk a lot about the music. We're probably going to talk about that a lot today. Um, and I want to ask you guys, uh, Jackie, also you co-wrote, I understand all of the songs within the series. Is that right? Listen, Heather, I was just trying to make myself some jobs, babe. <laughs> Can I? So I've been a songwriter um, for forever. Um, and yeah, my friend Dave Schuler and I, we wrote all 52 of, of the songs for this series. It's really, it's really That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And there's such sweet well, songs too. Well, so we, were trying, we were trying, I mean, our main focus was to make a musical catalog and a preschool show mm -hmm. that wouldn't make the parents want to put the kid's iPad in the microwave. <laughs> so, and, like this, okay, babe. And that was my first note. When I came on, I was like, so is there something we can do that wouldn't make me want to hop in my car and drive far, far away when my kids are watching the television. Right. Um, and I just want to, I want to step on a couple of those answers Jackie gave, because I want, I want everyone to get a really well-rounded view of what's happening. It's like, of course, you're going to interview the person that wrote the songs. And you're going to be like, wow, you wrote the songs. And they'd be like, yeah, I did. Jackie and I have been best friends for 20 years now. And, and Jackie it worked on her own music, which is great for a very, very long time. And I mean, to the extent of like, she was shooting her music videos in my backyard and like, Hey, can I borrow this section of your backyard? backyard and she like she was such she was hustling getting her music out there but it's because even though writing music is very difficult it comes very naturally to Jackie and to Dave Schuler, who by the way this is such a familial show he happens to live right next door to me wow. um the two of them are prolific together but they're prolific in a way of like 
modern pop music and real music producers. So they're not just like, they can't just plunk on the piano and they write children's songs. They decided to write each one of these 52 songs in a different musical genre. So you're gonna have like a hard rock song. You're gonna have a country song. You're gonna have a Olivia Newton-John type song. You're gonna have like so many different types of music with hooks that are actually like modern and catchy that will not make you wanna shut the TV off. So I just want to expand on how how Jackie's talents actually influenced the show beyond just having this idea with Mike, which was brilliant, which was bring music into the doorsteps of children in their house since arts education is being cut, which is very, very important to me as a mom. And my kids go to public school. I mean, it is a charter. So our allotments were allowed to funnel into more music or arts if we want, and we keep those alive. But a lot of public schools don't have that opportunity. And having studied music at a young age, th there is so much science and data that tells us that learning about music at a young age will brighten the neural pathways of math, of social skills, of all of, of mechanics, of engineering, of all of these other pathways that kids could study. But it's the same idea why they put baby Einstein on in the womb. Music does something to your brain. So to have a show that was completely engulfed in music that taught music so that kids would then have the opportunity to play with the toys that we've made alongside of it which was very strategic and or the apps be able to make music by themselves it's just it's all about making them smarter and better and happier and i don't think that this show would have been as successful if jackie hadn't had the sort of music career as an adult that she had Absolutely. We who can I have Kristen Bell as my hype woman too, please? That's same, amazing. Same. I mean, <laughs> I had to try not to cry. I know. I was like, can we all just have a Kristen Bell friend, please? <laughs> Look, I like so the sweet. real talk. I like the real talk, you know. Yeah, no, I love that. I, I love that. And that was actually one of the things I wanted to talk about is your is your friendship. And you guys have been friends for so long. So I'm glad you brought that up. Is this the first time you guys have collaborated on something like this together? We the exact same thing. You both did the exact same thing where you were like this at the same time. You know, <laughs> it's not the first time we've collaborated because we Jackie did an episode of Veronica Mars and mm -hmm. like we've worked on other things together. But um, as I said, sometimes I'm her location manager when she needs to do a video and my <laughs> Um, but this was the first time we like d went down the developmental road of a show because she and Michael came to my dining room my nook and mm -hmm. they brought a bunch of pictures that michael had drawn and all of these ideas about what do re mi would be and again like the developmental road it was a little bit different back then they were shaped differently but sure. it was about these three characters that lived in bebopsburg and i was like this is really a good 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 idea let me make some calls and see who we can get this in front of and luckily everyone got excited and um, going with Gaumont and Amazon was the best decision we've all ever made because they have shepherded this project like just the best parents possible. And then coming across Luke who added like the perfect amount of flair to this trio, we've just been lucky along the way. We so really have. Oh, sorry. I want to bring in Luke here. And I also want to bring in some of our family press who are watching and who have sent in some great questions. So Luke, your first question is from Angie White from My Fan Guide. And she wants to know, um, you play Doe, the character of Doe. It says Doe yes. could be described as a hesitant flyer. What mm -hmm. lessons do you hope that you are getting through the ki to the kids in a way um, that Doe interacts with the world, in the way that Doe interacts with the world? Well, you know, Doe, Doe's an owl who like to invent things and he's always curious and um, I think to kind of go back to to him being nervous and sometimes nervous about flying the one thing that I will say about him that I want to instill in my life all the time is that he just never gives up and like having the support of his friends um, to keep cheering him on I think it's just so important that if you have something that you're passionate about and really want to succeed in that you have to just keep trying and doing um, doing that thing. And he soothes himself through music and which is obviously the basis of our show and just draws from so many outside wonderful creative, um, what would you call it? Like inspirations, inspirations that allow him to, 
to achieve the main thing, which is, you know, flying and being the, the best owl that he can be. <laughs> oh, and we love that. He's so cute. Can I jump on hyping Luke for a second? I'm yes. sorry. I was going to do also. So yes, the reality please. is like Luke's role is desperately important. And, and you know, being the, the I have two girls and there is there are many, many moments in the day where something that everyone's doing, that every other kid can doing can be doing, they can't do. And that mm-hmm. is an intensely familiar feeling to kids. And so with with the character of Doe and with Luke in particular, what he captures so well is the idea of like, being ner- translating the nervousness and hesitancy and sort of like internal failure of being like he's not a flyer right but he's a bird he should be able to fly and this is identifying in kids when like everybody's kicking the ball and some reason you can't get it or you can't catch it or you can't add cr- as much as your friends can or you can't subtract all these things that you think you should be able to do he brings to life the hesitancy but also this underlying like um not just curiosity but almost like determination to be like well then i'll solve it a different way if i can't fly i'll solve it by making a catapult like Mm -hmm. he he relies on his brain and so the lesson obviously to instilling kids is like it doesn't matter if you can't do the normal thing that everybody thinks you should be able to do you have a variety of other skill sets that can get you there and luke captures that so well Thank Absolutely. you, Kristen. Hype woman of the year. All the year. 100, the 2021. Year. <laughs> all, I, all I was going to say is, can you believe that that, that, that sexy British voice is turned so, into yes, a nervous voice. little American owl? It's, oh a, it's so amazing. It's such a transformation. And it's so darling to hear all of the voices. Um, you guys, are, they've obviously kind of like pitched it up just a little bit for you guys, but it's so... Um, you can hear your voices, your, uh, your voices without it, just a little bit in there, if you're listening closely. Um, and you, um, Kristen actually, I think touched on this, uh, question from Cami Allen from the mama diaries, um, about, uh, since Doe Ray and me originated pre pandemic, now that we are in the midst of a pandemic and music classes are being cut from classrooms, how are you hoping this series can fill that void for kids? I mean, it's why we made the show. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the it's it's sort of been our mission statement from the very beginning. Um, Luke and I don't have kids yet, but obviously Kristen does. And I know I speak for um, Mike and I, the creators, the uh, our nieces and nephews, Mm -hmm. we were watching them like for every Christmas, for every birthday. All I was gifting them was music lessons because that's a thing that's not in schools anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's we are super passionate about, you know, this show bringing that to them. I love that. And that definitely comes across. Oh, sorry, Luke, go ahead. No, I was going to say, which is um, probably something that you you were going to talk about, Kristen, is that we have um, so many other outlets that are a part of this show too. You know, we have apps, we've got games, the toys where you can actually interact with and make your own music. Like it's, the world is so big and that's another way of bringing the show during, during this time when music lessons aren't happening. And Heather, to your point, it's sneaky as hell because the kids are going to feel like they're watching. Look, and I I love being sneaky with my kids. I'm sorry, but it is a mandatory, a mandatory parenting skill. It's a survival. I have told them their birthday was on different days. If I was working on it, I have told them that the, I've set the clocks to a different time. Be like, oh my gosh, it's bedtime. <laughs> you have to have that for survival Ooh. as a parent. When they're young, when they start to catch on, you're going to be in murky waters. It's tricky. But while they're really little, <clears throat> they're going to think this is complete entertainment, but it is it is going to have preschool kids reap the developmental benefits of music education and inspire a love and an appreciation for music, which, I mean, to be honest, is the only reason I found acting. I was studying like opera when I was 11 years old. And then it was getting so fatiguing to sing in Italian all the time. And they gave me musical theater. And I was like, what is this? It's in English. And I can understand her point of view. They're like, it's musical theater. Do you want to try it? And I was like, yeah, for the rest of my life, I will. (laughs) Yes, please. We're going to have it. You know, you can easily just turn the television on and know that your kids are actually getting a music education because we were very, very specific about that there. Even though it comes with all these things of like games and toys and it's on TV 
there there is a um, non sinister motive underneath, which mm-hmm. is that we are going to get music education in front of kids come hell or high water, and we want your kids to have exposure to it um, because it does so much good for their brain. So we're we're going to trick them, and we're going to have it around every corner, and even the little dolls like they talk and they sing, and we just want kids to have it. And the other thing is that music brings people together. Mm-hmm. You can make music on your own, but it, one of the things the show talks about is that it's better together. And I think we all know we sort of need that right now. Kids will learn how to better communicate. They'll be able to make music together within all the toys and on the apps. And we just think it's going to be great, great for those little brains. I think so too. And I'm glad you brought up that point about them. Um, let's all working together because one of the questions that we have here is from Carrie Christina from Raising Three Savvy Ladies. She says, um, I enjoy the songs and the musical moments, but I couldn't help noticing how music and teamwork helped solve problems too. What do you think other important messages the show will share pre- to, uh, with preschoolers as they begin school and work on friendships and social school, uh, social skills? Well, one of, the, one of the exciting things about the show is that every episode, and KB, you can take it from here because you'll speak to this better, but every episode has a musical genre, a musical lesson, and an emotional lesson. Mm -hmm. So there's an episode where it's, you know, listen to your body, right? Like if you're, if you're tired, you need to rest. If you're hurt, you need to, so there, there are, um, there are, there are emotional education uh, lessons in every single episode. And the really, the funny thing is that was exposed to us during the course of writing this and creating it, like we were ready to dig deep and figure out how to talk about music and teamwork and and all these other skill sets we wanted to weave in. And it presented itself because every different part of music has an emotional lesson in it. It's why when we listen to music, we feel emotion. It's why like, you know, there's that old lore, which I think is true about Chinatown was like sitting on a shelf in somebody's cabinet at Paramount or whoever made it because it didn't have the right score and they dusted it off a year later they put the right score to it and it won an Oscar like music has a lot of power but like in the song that Jackie's referencing is a perfect example like the song is like uh the 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 emotional story is that her character Ray is going too fast and she's trying to learn this dance number she wants to be on this dance team and she's too fast and she's getting fatigued and she's getting all muddled And the dance teacher starts to sing, you got to listen to your body when it's trying to talk to you. Rest, rest. And uh, her character, Ray, rests, but resting is a part of writing music. Like if anyone has ever seen a music graph, there is a rest where you take your hands off the piano keys, where you stop singing. It's a moment in music that is really important, but it's also a moment in our emotional lives. And we were able to find every part of music as an emotional lesson and it just fused brilliantly. I love that. And it's, and it feels good as a parent when you're watching it. I have an eight year old, so she's obviously a little bit older um, of a, for this demographic of this show, but she enjoyed it for the music. She loves anything that's entertaining her in that way. There's something about music, like you said, that's so engaging in that way. So um, you guys, we are about to wrap up, but just really quickly, I want to give a shout out to the family press outlets that have been watching and are very excited. And we didn't get to everybody's questions, but I want to say thank you to my fan guide, uh, the mama diaries, Victor Aragon at fan dads, Robin Davis, mom, the magnificent great title. Uh, Candy Olivares at Candy Palooza, Megan Cooper at Jamunky, Kristen Patricchio at the Patricchios, uh, Carrie Christina at Raising Three Savvy Ladies, Rachel Berry, Pretty in Baby Food. Thank you guys so Wait, much. Heather, can you ask, did dads <laughs> submit a question? Sorry, I'll take Fan the- dads? Did fan dads ask a question? I think we should hear from the dads. You guys, he, you guys answered almost all of his questions already. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't want to be repetitive, uh, but you guys in the beginning, like, Answered almost everyone's question. <laughs> <So laughs> you guys are pros. That's uh, like yeah, apology, pros. apology for preparedness and being thorough. Both. <laughs> Sorry, wow. we're so prepared. <laughs> well, thank you guys again for taking the time to talk with us. We want to remind everybody that Do Ray and Me will be available on Amazon Prime Video, uh, the first six episodes on September 17th. Thank you guys again. We can't wait to share it with the world and uh, watch it with our families. Thank you. Thank you.